Now we are going to start the part of runways or the runway engineering and uh, in this lecture we will mainly focus on the different types of airports, aircraft characteristics and uh, payload versus range chart. So let's start runway engineering. Runway engineering includes planning and design of airports. So when we use the term planning, so airport master plan, airport configuration, air traffic control, air travel demand forecasting, airfield capacity, terminal capacity, and airport environmental and noise issues will be considered. As far as the design is concerned, aircraft characteristics, structural design of airport pavements, that means runway, taxiway, and the apron, geometric design of airfield, airport, lighting, marking, and drainage will be considered. So if you just look at the air transportation, uh, it improves accessibility to otherwise inaccessible areas, provides continuous connectivity over land and water, so no change of equipment is needed, brings in relief during emergency conditions, saves productive time spent in journey increases the demand of specialized technical skill workforce, adds to foreign reserve through tourism, etc. Heavy funds are required, not only initially, but also during operations. Operations are highly dependent on weather conditions, requires highly sophisticated machinery, chances of outward flow of foreign exchange, safety provisions are not adequate, specific demarcation of flight paths and territories is essential. Uh, well, if you just look at the development of air transport, in 1903, first successful flight by Wilbur and Orville Wright at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina was done. In 1909, French pilot crossed the English Channel to England. 1911, post was carried by air in India from Allahabad to Nanny. In 1912, flight between Delhi and Karachi, and 1914, air passenger transport began in Germany. <coughs> in 1918, first international service between France and Spain. 1919, London, Paris flight. 1930, round the world flight. 1949, world's first jet airliner first flight. 1954, the Boeing 707 first flight. 1969, Concorde first flight, supersonic plane. 1969, Boeing 747 100 flight. And 2005, Airbus A30 first flight. Air transport in India and Pakistan. Taking into consideration the geographic positions of India and Pakistan in relation to other countries of the world, air transport plays a very important part in the development of communication, commerce, tourism, cultural and sociological exchanges, both domestically and with the rest of the world.
Civil Air Transport in India was started as early as 1911. However, the progress during the first 30 years was far from satisfaction. On 23rd October 1946, a new airline was born, Mr. M. S. Fani, who was a friend of Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, was the chairman and air vice marshal. O. K. Carter was uh, appointed as the general manager operations, and it was started on 4 June 1947. Subsequently, Orient Airways transferred its base to Pakistan and established a vital link between Karachi and Dhaka. Orient Airways was a privately owned company with a limited capital and resources. It was then that, that the government of Pakistan decided to form a state-owned airline and invited Orient Airways to merge with it. The outcome of merger was the birth of new airline through PIAC Ordinance 1955 on January 10, 1955. So that was the beginning of the Pakistan International Airlines. So Mr. M. A. Swani was the first chairman of the new dynamic airline. Now the introduction to airport. An airport is a facility where passengers connect from ground transportation to air transportation. So you can see here the Atlanta International Airport. The world's first airport was built in 1928 at Croydon near London. It was the main airport for London till it was closed down in 1959 after the World War II. It is now open as a visitor center for aviation. Well, if you just look at uh, the major groups of activities in the aviation, uh, we are having airport, air traffic services, airlines and the regulations. So airline, an organization that provides scheduled flights for passengers or cargo. So here you can see some leading airlines of the world at the moment. Air traffic services. Air traffic services help in navigating aircraft while landing, takeoff, flying in the air, overflying any country, taxiing on the ground and parking. Taxiing means when the aeroplane is moving slowly at the airport, we use the word taxiing. They provide are disciplined in the air and also on the ground and uh, maintain safety. The services are provided by using modern equipment including radars. Air transport agencies. International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, International Air Transport Association, IATA, and Civil Aviation Authority, CAA. So first look at the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. So this is the monogram of ICAO. The International Civil Aviation Organization an agency of the United Nations codifies the principles and techniques of international air navigation 
and fosters the planning and development of international air transport to ensure safe and orderly growth. So there are different annexes in the document of International Civil Aviation Organization and Annex 12, uh, sorry, Annex 14 deals with the aerodromes. Aerodromes means airports. So here you can see the list of the annexes and you can see here in Annex 14 that is dealing with the aerodromes or the airports. Then comes the Federal Aviation Authority FAA. FAA is the National Aviation Authority of the United States of America. It has authority to regulate and oversee all aspects of civil aviation in the United States of America. Then comes International Air Transport Association, IATA or IATA. Uh, International Air Transport Association's stated mission is to represent, lead, and serve the airline industry. All the airlines rules and regulations are defined by ATA. The main aim is to provide safe and secure transportation to its passengers. Civil Aviation Authority. Pakistan's Civil Aviation Authority CA is regulatory authority which oversees and regulates all aspects of civil aviation in Pakistan. All civilian airports in Pakistan are owned and operated by CA. CA is a member of the ICAO. CA's head office is situated in Terminal 1 of Jinnah International Airport, Karachi. So what is airport or the aerodrome? We can say a defined area on land or water, including any buildings, installations, and equipment intended to be used either wholly or in part for the arrival, departure, and surface movement of aircraft. So this is one way to define the aerodrome or the airport. Now we are going to discuss different terms. So we have already defined the airport. There are different ways to define the airport. So one way is, you know, that any area defined on the land, including any building, installation, and equipment intended for arrival or departure and movement of aircraft. Now what is aircraft? Aircraft or aeroplane or airplane. So you can say flying machine, which is heavier than air. Aviation, this term means flying with the help of machines heavier than air. General aviation. General aviation is the term used to designate all flying done other than the commercial airlines. Airfield. Portion of airport used exclusively for landing and takeoff of aeroplanes. Area including building, installations, and equipments for aircraft takeoff, landing, and surface movement. Now, airspace. Space area surrounding an airport for aircraft maneuver after takeoff and before landing. International airport is the handling international air traffic and functional according to the rule set forth by ICAO. It contains custom facilities in addition to normal facilities. Land side for passenger operations, area to accommodate the passengers, so terminal building and passengers vehicles, parking facilities. Airport ground assess systems, area to accommodate the vehicles to or from the surrounding city area and between the various building around the airport. So it means car, buses, taxis, 
and the railways, all these will be considered. So general types of airport. So generally we can uh, have these different uh, types, general types of airports. So domestic airports, regional airports and international airports. So international airports, an international airport has direct service to many other airports, handle scheduled commercial airlines both for passengers and cargo. Many international airports also serve as hubs or places where non-direct flights may land and passengers switch planes. Typically equipped with customs and immigration facilities to handle international flights to and from other countries. Such airports are usually larger and often feature longer runways and facilities to accommodate the large aircraft. So here look at that, this is the Chicago International Airport. This one is the Heathrow Airport, England. This is the Beijing Capital International Airport, China. And this is the Hong Kong International Airport. Then comes domestic airports, as the word domestic is portraying something. A domestic airport is an airport which handles only domestic flights or flights within the same country. Domestic airports don't have customs and immigration facilities and are therefore incapable of handling flights to or from a foreign airport. These airports normally have short runways which are sufficient to handle short or medium sized aircraft. The regional airports. A regional airport is an airport serving traffic within a relatively small or lightly populated geographical area. A regional airport usually does not have customs and immigration facilities to process traffic between countries. Aircraft using these airports tend to be smaller business jets or private aircraft, the general aviations. So here you can see Louisiana Interregional Airport in United States of America. So simply you can see a runway strip is there and a small building is there. Airport ownerships. Most of the world's airports are owned by government bodies who then lease the airport to private corporations who oversee the airport's operation. For example, in Pakistan, airports are authorized by Civil Aviation Authority CAA. CAA is responsible to focus on the operations, management and maintenance of Pakistan airports. How to manage airports? There are several divisions to manage each sub-organization at an airport. These divisions including airport operation services like security, fire and rescue and maintenance, airport planning and development, that means the engineering division, airport financial division for revenues and the business. The primary objective of each division is to ensure the operational efficiency, safety and security of passengers, cargo and aircraft operations. Port site selection. So here these are the specific aspects that, uh, to be, that, that are to be considered. Air traffic potential, adequate access, sufficient airspace, and sufficient land. So factors affecting site selection, atmospheric and meteorological conditions, 
availability of land for expansion, availability of utilities, development of the surrounding area, economy of construction, ground accessibility, presence of other airports, regional plan of the state or, or the province or the city, soil characteristics, surrounding obstructions and the use of airports. These are the factors uh, which uh, will affect the site selection of for the airport. So factors controlling airport size, elevation of airport site above mean sea level, meteorological conditions, performance characteristics of airplanes and the volume of air traffic. Layout or the components of airport, terminal building, apron, runways, taxiways, hangars, air traffic control, ATC, uh, which is comprised of, you know, control tower, guidance system, lighting system. Warm-up pads, which are also known as run-up pads, or you can say the holding apron. So we will discuss all these things. So terminal building. It facilitates passengers arriving at or departing from airport. This includes uh, this include inquiry counter, telephone, security personnel, restaurant, visitors gallery, parking area, waiting rooms, washrooms, baggage clear section. Then apron. Apron is basically the parking area for loading and unloading of passengers. So you can simply say it's parking area of the aeroplane. Runway, paved strip used by aircraft for landing and takeoff. Holding apron or warm up pads or run up pads. In order to check the aircrafts before taking off, aprons are provided at the end of the runways where the aircrafts are either finally checked for takeoff or held up for takeoff clearance and this clearance will be taken from the control tower. Size of the apron you, uh, should be large so that other planes ready to take off can pass easily. Taxiway. It connects runway to the other parts of the airport. For example, aprons, hangars, or it is paved path for taxing the aircraft to and from the runway. Hangar. Aircraft shelters and maintenance area. And ATC air traffic control, it includes control tower, guidance system, lighting system, etc. Well, if we just look at the airport structure, <clears throat> we can consider the land side and the air side. And here you can see the different components of the airports. So land side services, facilities associated with the movement of passengers and baggage away from aircraft areas, airport facilities devoted <clears throat> to service passengers in to and inside the terminal areas. And the examples are terminal building, car parking and ground access. Airside services. <clears throat> Facilities associated with the movement of the airplanes on the airport service. All facilities considered beyond the passenger security areas will be considered under that. And the examples are runway, taxiway, apron, maintenance hangar. Now, airport types. There are different uh, grounds on which uh, we can categorize the airports. Now look at this. 
conventional takeoff and landing CTOL most common 3 to 4 kilometer for example Lahore airport this is the length of the runway serving general aviation as well as air carrier that means uh, commercial airlines will be uh, the main you can say target in this case reduced takeoff and landing RTOL for smaller aircraft having the capacity of 85 to 145 passengers and the runway length is uh, from 1000 to what, 1300 meter may allow steep approach to reduce noise and cost of the aeroplane short takeoff and landing STOL and here look at that the runway length is very small 500 to 1000 meter and then for the helicopters vertical takeoff and landing <coughs> commonly called heliports aircraft lifts off and lands vertically operational area is about 25 to 50 square meters airport classification systems functional classification under that we are having the US airport network and British national airport system <clears throat> uh, geometric classification ICAO airport reference code and FAA classification so functional classification so US airport network under that we are having the local interest airports national integrated airport system and the military airports and the national integrated airport system for that we are having the primary airports commercial service other airports you can say reliever airports for relieving congestion at commercial service airports and the public airports <clears throat> well as far as the British national airport system is concerned we are having the gateway international airport regional airports local airports and the general aviation airports okay geometric classification ICAO aerodrome reference code a code number linked to the reference field length and a code letter linked to the wing span and the outer main gear wheel span according to the table hereafter. So look at this we are having the codes from 1 to 4 and uh, these codes are associated with the airplane a reference field length that means the runway length you can say less than 800 meter then the code for airport is 1 when you are having uh, the runway length a from 800 meter to less than 1200 it is 2 and 3 is uh, from 1200 meter to less than 1800 and uh, when you are having 1800 and over so code 4 will be used for that particular airport so in this way based upon the runway length we could be able to get the code number then code letter will be used with this code number for that particular airport and you know the code letter the code letters are associated with the wingspan and the outer main gear wheel span so based upon the wing span and the outer main gear wheel span we can get the code letter accordingly so let's say the code letter is D and uh, the code number is 3 so you can say it's 3D airport 
So, in this way different combinations are possible. To understand the terms look at the front view of the aeroplane. So, this dimension is known as wingspan from tip to tip and uh, if you just look at these wheels and these main wheels. So, this distance is known as wheel tread and if you just look at the side view. So, this is the starting point of the aeroplane and this is the last. So, this is the overall length of the aeroplane. So, main wheels are there. So, you can say the main gear and in the front we are having this gear which is called as nose gear and this distance from the nose gear to the main gear this is called as the wheel base and when the plane is uh, parked so the height can be measured from the surface up to the highest point of the aeroplane this is called as the maximum height of the aeroplane. So, in the previous slide we use these terms some of these terms in the table. FAA classification FAA has developed an aircraft design group concept which groups aircrafts by wingspan and relates airport design standard to these groups. So, this is a very simple system. Uh, we are having categories like that 1, 2, 6 and just based upon the wingspan we can pick that number in no Roman. Okay, the basic forces acting on aeroplane. Airplane engine driven vehicle that can fly through the air supported by the action of air against its wings. Airplanes are heavier than air in contrast to vehicles such as balloons and airships which are lighter than air. Airplanes have rigid wings, movable part of the wings and tail which make it possible to guide their flight. Modern airplanes range from ultra light aircraft weighing not more than 46 kg to 550 metric ton. Land planes operate from ground, sea planes operate on water and amphibians can operate on both land and sea. Airplanes lift off using the jet thrust of their engines or rotors. So, the basic force is acting on aeroplane, lift force, thrust force, weight of the aeroplane and the drag force. So, look at this when the plane is flying you can see that uh, thrust is in the direction of the movement of aeroplane, drag is in the opposite direction of the movement of the aeroplane and lift is acting in the upward direction and obviously the weight is acting in the downward direction. So, weight every body on the earth has weight Boeing 747 can weigh up to 870,000 pound lift. Lift is the aerodynamic force that holds an airplane in the air. Upward force on the plane wings alter the direction of flow of air as it passes. The speed of the airflow and angle at which the wings meet the oncoming air stream also contribute to the amount of lift generated. Depends upon the angle of attack of wind and the orientation of the flaps of wings. Drag. Drag is an aerodynamic force that resists the motion of an object moving through a fluid. Airplane through air produces friction as it interacts with air and because of it must move the air out of its way to do its work. A high lift wing surface may create a great deal of lift for an airplane but because of its large size it is also creating a significant amount of drag. Drag is minimized by 
designing sleek aerodynamic aeroplane so you are having the minimum resistance uh, through the air with shape that slip easily through the air then come thrust thrust is an and dyna, uh, aerodynamic force that must be created by an aeroplane to overcome the drag force that propels an airplane forward through the air it is provided by the airplane's propulsion system either a propeller or jet engine or a combination of the two now types of aircraft engine according to the type of propulsion and the thrust generating medium aircraft can be categorized into the following piston engine aircraft and the turbine engine aircraft piston engine all propeller, propeller driven aircrafts run because of reciprocating engines with gasoline as fuel are designated as the piston engine aircraft or aeroplane turbo propulsion aircraft driven by turbine engines are known as turbo props or propulsions turbojet when the thrust is directly achieved from the turbine engines not through propellers they are known as turbojets and the turbo fan that is the improved version of turbojet that is when a fan is added to the turbojet engine to increase the thrust of the engine it is designated as turbofan now we are going to discuss some important terms ground speed speed of aircraft relative to ground air speed speed of aircraft in air relative to the medium or you can say the speed of aircraft wing air speed across the wings now to understand this look at this aeroplane which is flying so the speed of this aeroplane with respect to relative to the air that is air speed and uh, in this case you can see that the wind is blowing in this with a certain speed so this is the wind speed and if we consider the speed of this aeroplane relative to the ground so this is the ground speed now in this case you can see that uh, this is the ground speed this is the air speed and this is the wind speed so obviously ground speed is equal to air speed plus wind speed but if the wind is blowing in the opposite direction then ground speed will be equal to air speed minus wind speed so you can see this thing ground speed is equal to air speed plus minus wind speed plus sign will be used if the wind is in the direction of aircraft and negative sign if the wind is in the opposite direction of the aircraft so there is one simple example if the ground speed of an aircraft is 600 km per hour that means the ground speed is given and speed of the wind in the opposite direction is 100 km per hour so what does this mean when the wind is blowing in the opposite direction negative sign will be used over here so when you will substitute ground speed equal to 600 and uh, speed of the wind that is 100 with that the negative sign because it is blowing in the opposite direction so what is the air speed that would be 600 plus 100 so it would be 700 so you can see this example again if the ground speed of an aircraft is 600 km per hour and speed of the wind in the opposite direction is 100 km per hour air speed is 700 km per hour supersonic and subsonic aircraft reference datum for speed of aircraft is the speed of the sound most military aircrafts are supersonic having mach number more than 1 transport aircrafts are subsonic having mach number less than 1 now what is the mach number mach number the ratio between aircraft speed and the speed of the sound 
speed of the sound at minus 25 degrees Celsius is 1138 km per hour, at 0 degrees centigrade is 1194 km per hour and at 30 degrees Celsius is 1263 km per hour. Not 1 minute of arc of earth is equal to nautical mile that is approximately equal to 1.852 km. So, total nautical miles at equator 316 to 60 that is uh, 21600 uh, you can say it is about 40,000 kilometer. So, one knot is basically nautical miles per hour. So, knot is basically nautical miles per hour and that is equal to 1.852 kilometer per hour. So, you will have to memorize this relationship. So, one knot or simply the knot meaning this nautical miles per hour and uh, one knot is equal to 1.852 kilometer per hour. Now, the characteristics of transport aircrafts, type of aircraft, aircraft dimensions, turning radius, aircraft speed, maximum structural takeoff weight, wingspan and total length, wheelbase, number and types of engines, payload. Payload means the revenue generating load, gear configuration, aircraft capacity, operating range. Range is the distance that your plane is covering. So, look at the gear locations. The main gears are over here. This is the nose gear. On the side view, you can see these things more clearly. The nose gear is this one, and this is the main gear. So, one main gear is under this wing, the other main gear is uh, under this wing. So, generally, we are having these gears, generally, but uh, different configurations are possible. Now, here you can see Airbus A300 and uh, distances are given for, I mean, the dimensions are given for that particular plane in this particular slide. Size of aircraft. The center to center distance between the two gear system is known as wheelbase. Wheel, wheel tread is the central distance between the main gears on either side. Span of the wings uh, decides the width of the taxiway, size of aprons and hangers. Fuselage or length of aircraft decides the widening of taxiway on curves, size of aprons and hangers. So again, you can see that uh, this is the wingspan, this is the wheel tread, and uh, this is the wheel base. And considering this thing that this is the main gear, this is the nose gear, and this is the fuselage, or you can say the length of the aeroplane, and this is the maximum height. Height decides the height of the hangar gate and various installation at hangars. Distance between main gears governs the minimum turning radius of the aircraft. Wheelbase decides minimum taxi width radius. Radius requirement for the aircraft. For establishing the path of movement of aircraft on airport and determining position of aircraft near the terminal, it is necessary to know the movement capability of the aircraft. The turning radius is a function of nose gear steering angle. When the radius is minimum, it produces excessive tire wear. Maximum radius is critical with regards to the clearance to the adjacent buildings and aircrafts. Maximum turning radii reduce the excessive tire wear and shearing of the pavement surface. New aircraft has the capability of swivel or the rotation of the main gears for the sharp turns. So here you can have the idea when the nose gear has been stirred 
and you can see now the nose gear is following this path so you can see that uh, the main gear this one is following this path and in this way you know ultimately we are going to generate this circle and in this way we are going to ro rotate the aeroplane so this one with respect to that if you just look at this this is known as the minimum turning radius for this particular aeroplane if you have moved to the maximum I mean to say you have turned the nose gear to its maximum capacity and you are having this circle like this so this radius I mean to say this is known as the minimum turning radius of the aeroplane so as I mentioned that there are different configuration for the wheel the typical wheel configuration of aircraft you can see if you are having one wheel at the front and two under the wing so this is the first case here you can see that two wheels are present in the nose gear and uh, you are having the twin tandem gears so four wheels over here four wheels over here and this one is the other arrangement in which you can see twin tandem gears are present over here and here look at that this is a special arrangement that the double twin tandem gears are present so different configurations are possible for different size planes different sizes of the planes now we have reached uh, this topic that is very very important that is the components of aircraft weight aircraft weight influences the thickness and length of the runway so in this regard these weights are very very important operating empty weight payload zero fuel weight maximum structural landing weight maximum takeoff weight and maximum ramp weight so first look at payload payload means revenue generating load that means the load of passengers and cargo operating empty weight OEW is the weight of the aircraft without fuel and payload so it means it includes pilot crew and empty seats it does not include payload and fuel then comes zero fuel weight ZFW so zero fuel weight you can take it like that that above that weight all additional weight is in the form of fuel only or you can say it may also be defined as the maximum airplane weight less usable fuel weight then next term is MTOW maximum takeoff operating weight to so MTOW stands for maximum takeoff operating weight the so structurally the maximum demonstrated mass at takeoff for safe flight excludes run up fuel and includes operating empty weight fuel and payload longer trips require more fuel with less payload then MALW maximum allowable landing weight it is the maximum demonstrated landing weight to keep the landing gear intact at maximum sink rate that means when the plane is coming vertically downward MSPW maximum structural payload weight which is the maximum demonstrated payload to be carried without stressing the aircraft fuselage that is the length of the aeroplane so this is ZFW zero fuel weight minus operating empty weight so when we use this term aircraft fuselage that means aircraft body 
and when you consider the length so we can say it's fuse large length or simply the length of the aeroplane then the next term is mtw that is the maximum taxiway weight or you can say the maximum ramp weight both terms can be used so maximum taxiway weight or maximum ramp weight for ground maneuvering usually slightly more than mtow because it also includes the run of fuel dtw desired takeoff weight and uh, desired takeoff weight is the weight of fuel plus reserve payload and operating empty weight to complete a given stage length so dtw that is equal to payload plus operating empty weight plus required fuel so well, this diagram is uh, the schematic sketch for the aircraft weight and you can see that uh, if you just look at the maximum gross takeoff weight, this is the maximum weight. It is obviously comprised of, uh, it is consisted of operating empty weight, payload, reserve fuel, and the trip fuel. That means uh, the fuel required for the journey, to complete the journey. So maximum structure landing weight is this one. Look at that. The sum of operating empty weight plus payload plus reserve fuel that is the maximum structure landing weight and if you look at that it has been seen that uh, the operating weight operating uh, empty weight that is about 45 percent the payload is 14 percent fuel reserve that is about six percent and the trip fuel 35 percent it's it's not for uh, these values are not meant for all aeroplanes but generally we are having the proportioning like that. Now, this is very, very important figure, or you can say chart, payload versus range chart. So you can see that payload is along vertical axis and along horizontal axis, we are having the range. And look at that, we are having different points, D, A, E, B, and C. range distance the aircraft can fly is called range range increases as payload decreases so this is very important point range increases as payload decreases now point a if you just look at that figure range at maximum payload fuel tank not completely filled so point a means it is uh, that particular case where the range at maximum payload fuel tank is not completely filled point b fuel tank completely filled aircraft takeoff at maximum takeoff weight point c maximum distance without payload and you know that range is considered as the ferry range Takeoff weight is less than the maximum takeoff operating weight. So payload versus range chart, that's very important for, uh, you know, for the maximum structure landing weight path DE is followed. Because in some aeroplanes, maximum structure landing weight is more critical. So in that particular case, path DE will be considered on the payload versus range chart. Now, the question uh, is that how long the aircraft can fly with maximum structural payload? So look at this one. This is the point A. And uh, at this point A, you can see you are having the maximum payload. And you can see that uh, at this particular point, the range is this one and uh, as the payload is being decreased you can see the range is going to increase so look at that point a point b at point b we are having the payload equal to pb and you can see that the range is rb which is greater than ra look at that 
and if you just look at the point C, here the payload is zero, absolutely zero, and you are having the maximum range that is R sub C. So if you just look at point A, point B, and point C, and if you just join these points in this fashion, so this is based upon the maximum structural takeoff weight, and uh, you are having this one, payload versus range chart. Limitation of payload. Airplane can't get lighter than operating empty weight. This is a very important point. Pavement structure is designed using maximum taxi takeoff and landing weights. Airplanes need fuel for reserves and trips limited by the size of fuel tanks. Now this point is very important and I need your special attention. If the tank, fuel tank is not filled completely, then weight of fuel which can be accommodated in the remaining capacity of the fuel tank is meant for the payload. The distance it can fly is referred to as range for aircraft. A number of factors influence the range of aircraft among the most important is payload. If the range is increased, the payload is decreased. With a weight trade-off occurring between the fuel to fly to the destination and the payload which can be carried. The relation between both parameters is illustrated in the payload versus range diagram or chart. So look at this one. We are having the two axes, payload versus range. And uh, you can see that in this way, we have got the payload versus range chart. Now again, look at point A. The point A that you have seen. So point A, the farthest distance R sub A which uh, an aircraft can fly with a maximum payload P A. Fuel tank is not completely filled because we are taking the maximum payload. The aircraft must take off at its maximum takeoff weight. Point B, the farthest distance of R sub B which an aircraft can fly if its fuel is completely filled. However, the payload cannot be carried as PB less than PA. The aircraft must take off at its maximum takeoff weight. C point, the maximum distance of an aircraft which can fly of R sub C without any payload. Payload is absolutely zero. It is referred to as the ferry range and is used for delivery of aircraft. The aircraft can take off at less than its maximum structural takeoff weight, however the maximum of fuel is necessary. Now this DE, that is a special case, the range of the aircraft when payload is limited by the maximum structural landing weight, then this path will be followed DE. So these are some important equations that you will have to keep in your mind. Maximum structural takeoff weight is equal to operating empty weight plus maximum structural payload plus allowable fuel. And there is another equation for the same maximum structural takeoff weight that is operating empty weight plus maximum fuel plus allowable payload. Landing weight is equal to the maximum structural takeoff weight minus root fuel. Reserve fuel is equal to reserve time in root service multiplied by average root speed multiplied by average fuel bunt. And allowable fuel is equal to the root fuel plus reserve fuel. Okay, now we are going to solve one example. And uh, in this example, we will use those equations that I have just shown. 
and ultimately you will be able to get the payload versus range diagram. Okay, look at uh, the statement. The weight characteristics in pound of a commercial aircraft are maximum structural takeoff weight to 20,000 pounds, maximum structural landing weight 198,000, zero fuel weight 182513, operating empty weight 125513, maximum structural payload 57,000, and the fuel capacity is 75,400 pounds. It is assumed that the regulations governing the use of aircraft require 1.25 hours reserve in route service. The aircraft has an average route speed of 540 miles per hour and an average fuel burn of 22.8 pounds per mile. That means for one mile coverage, you need 22.8 pound fuel. Plot the payload versus range diagram. So different steps are involved and uh, you will have to focus on those steps. So solution begins from here. First thing is find served range when aircraft carries the maximum payload. That means P sub A and R A. These two things are to be determined. So by using this equation, which is uh, in the blue color, you can see. So just by putting the values you can calculate the allowable fuel that is coming equal to this. You know the allowable fuel is equal to the reserve fuel plus root fuel and uh, reserve fuel is reserve time multiplied by every root speed multiplied by every fuel burnt. So just plug in the value so you are getting the reserve fuel equal to 15,390 pound. Now you can see from this equation you can determine the root fuel by this 37, 37487 minus 15390 and that is coming equal to this. So range at PA that is obviously this divided by the average fuel burn that is how much that is 22.8. So in this way, you are getting the range at P sub A that is 969 miles. For controlling weight, the landing weight at destination cannot exceed the maximum structural landing weight. The actual landing weight for maximum payload is, you know, landing weight is equal to maximum structural takeoff weight minus root fuel. So just plug in the value. So you are getting the value equal to 197903 pound, which is less than 198,000 pound. It's okay. So coordinates of the point A on the payload versus range chart. These are 57,000 pound and 969 mile. So we have got the coordinates of one point that is point A. Now the next step is find served range when aircraft carries the maximum fuel. So aircraft fuel capacity is 75,400 pounds. Therefore, maximum route fuel is computed from the weight of fuel capacity subtracted the reserve fuel. So maximum route fuel by subtracting the reserve fuel from this capacity. So you are getting 60,010 pounds. So range at maximum fuel, that is obviously this, divided by the average of the fuel burn which is given. So in this way, you have got the range 2632 miles. Thus, if the aircraft flies for maximum route length of 2632 miles, the payload must be restricted by subtracting the operating empty weight and the weight of the fuel capacity from the maximum structural takeoff weight. So in this case, you will have to use this formula. Maximum structural takeoff weight is equal to the operating empty weight plus allowable payload plus maximum fuel. So here you can plug in these values and you will be able to get the allowable payload that is coming 19087. So in this way, you have got the coordinates for the point B. 
So the coordinates of the point B are 19,087 uh, pound and 2632 miles. Now to get the coordinates of point C, find reserve range when aircraft flies without any payload. That means the payload is zero. And uh, obviously it will carry the maximum fuel in that case. So you are having the coordinates P sub C and R sub C, or you can say P sub zero, R sub zero, and here the R sub zero, and uh, you know that is R sub C, that is the ferry range. So ferry range is the maximum fuel capacity divided by fuel burned. This formula will be used for the ferry range. So ferry range is obviously coming equal to 3307 and you know the payload is zero. So the coordinates for point C, zero pound and 3307 miles. So now you are in a position to draw the uh, payload versus range diagram very easily. And you can see this thing like that, two axes will be drawn. And then you can draw this by marking point A, you are knowing the coordinates of point A, you are knowing the coordinates of point B, and you are knowing the point, uh, coordinate of point C. So in this way, this diagram can be drawn for this particular case. So by when you have got this diagram, so you can see that corresponding to any payload value, you can estimate the range very easily. So that's all for today. Thank you.